All right, Pepe, entering year two, um, you know, about 365 days ago, we were right here as well. Um, just talk about the growth you've had as a coach this program has gone through in that time. How, how much has everything improved and changed in, in the year that you've been here? Well, St. Joe's always had a great deal of tradition and, and discipline, but I think one of the things where it has changed is our standards have changed. We want to, each and every year, increase our level of standard, whether it's on the field, in the classroom, or out in the community. So I would say things are the same, but we're trying to elevate the standard each and every year. All right, um, Devin Guja, um, you know, one of the, a big, strong running back, had a great junior season. What are you looking for out of Devin this year? I'm expecting him to be a leader on and off the field. Uh, he's going to play on both sides of the ball, and uh, I expect him to be vocal and, and lead by, by example. Um, you had Chase Artofi as a quarterback last year, um, did a great job of protecting the football. I think only two interceptions. Um, it's looking like Mark Chris might be the guy this year. He's a young sophomore. Um, what are you expecting out of the quarterback position this year? Well, I got to defend Chase. It was one interception. One interception, my yeah, bad. He, he, he'd give me a hard time if I didn't correct <laughs> that. Um, Mark Chris, yes, is a sophomore, but one of the things that we talk about here is we don't care whether you're a sophomore or a senior. Uh, if you are the starting quarterback or the starting DN, you're going to be held accountable and you have certain responsibilities to, to uphold. Um, what about other skill positions that you have this year? Um, Darian Ling leads back, one of the most explosive playmakers um, that we've ever seen in the area, you know, for the last couple of decades. Yeah, he, he can take it any, you know, any time he touches the ball. Um, is he going to be one of those guys that you, you lean on to, to break the big play? Is there another guy there? How do you feel about, you know, picking up chunks of yards? What do you have there? No, absolutely. I mean, Darian is obviously a very explosive player. He does an incredible job of stretching the field. We're going to attempt to put him at different spots throughout the field, so you always have to hold him accountable. And uh, when that occurs, other guys have to start making plays when they start doubling him or, or paying attention to him. Um, you had Trevor Cole. That was really your, your number one receiver last year. Um, is, is there someone that you think is going to fill that role this year? Is it going to be Darian, um, someone else that's going to step up? How do you feel about your number one receiver role this year? <laughs> I think it'll be by committee. Okay. It'll be game by game. The truth is we're all about developing players. Uh, I don't think anyone knew who Trevor Cole was coming into his senior year, but I'm sure after this year ended, they certainly knew who he was. And I think that's kind of a, a St. Joe theme to where it's the next guy up and guys are constantly being developed. So it will certainly be by committee. Um, you know, you, if you don't know, Coach Villasenor, one of the greatest receivers in Ventura <laughs> County history. Um, how important is that position on a team, having a really reliable receiver? Some people might overlook that. Some people look at quarterbacks, you know, someone on the defense to lead the way. How, how important do you think it is to have a, a really solid receiving court? Well, it's, it's very solid, not only in the pass game, but also in the blocking game. Okay. Um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is constantly doing your job and, and blocking, running the right routes. Obviously, we run an up-tempo offense, so a lot of the times our play is being changed at the line of scrimmage depending on the look that we get, and everyone has to be on the same page. One guy's not doing the appropriate thing, the entire play can collapse. So accountability is certainly a large part of not only our team, but particularly our offense. All right. You're talking about tempo on offense. Um, you know, high school, college, we're seeing a lot of RPO stuff, run, pass, option. Are you guys looking to incorporate that at all? Are you seeing that, that at the high school level, a lot of RPO stuff? Are you guys thinking about that at all? Yeah, absolutely, very much so. Uh, it certainly gives our quarterback, who, who can be a mobile quarterback, different options, and it also keeps the defense on their toes and guessing. Uh, you have to be schematically sound in order to stop the RPO game, so we will implement that. Defensively, um, what are you looking? What are you looking like? Who, who do you expect to to really, you know, stand up? I think Zach Wilson was your guy in the middle last year. He's gone. Um, anybody on defense that you really look kind of leaning on to to stand out this year? Really, the entire defense. Um, Again, accountability and responsibility is huge. Everyone's assignment will be critical. Um, our linebacking core is a, a veteran linebacking core, so we'll definitely rely on them. We do have um, a couple of defensive backs that are in their first year, but they'll be held accountable and, and they'll be ready. Okay. Um, you know, watching you work as a coach, it seems like you don't really focus on one area. Um, you know, I see you working with offensive linemen, I see you working with receivers. 
you were out at practice yesterday throwing the ball downfield. How important is it for you to be a well-rounded coach that can help pretty much any position on the field? Is that what you try to do as a coach, helping where you can, anywhere you can as a head coach of this team? No, absolutely. Obviously, spending so many years being an offensive coordinator or a quarterback's coach or a wide receiver's coach, people expect me to just focus on offense. But the truth is, to be a good offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator, you have to know the other side of the ball. And I do like to put a great deal of input on both sides of the ball as well as special teams. All right, got to ask you about the schedule. Um, CVC's here at Garces. Got Centennial, I, I believe, as well, Bakersfield Correct. St. Margaret's down in San Juan Capistrano. San Juan Capistrano. Um, Rigetti, obviously, that schedule, um, you know, for me being on the outside looks like a lot of fun. A lot of fun to cover those big games. How do you feel as a coach? So many big games this year that you guys have. Well, we're excited. I mean, the truth is we can play an 0-10 team or a 10-0 team, and my anxiety is going to be up, and I'm going to want everything to be perfect regardless. But like I said, we're talking about creating a high level of standard, and with doing so, we want to be playing quality opponents week in and week out. That way our young men are prepared for the postseason. God willing, we get there. Okay. Um, you guys were in D1 last year played board at home in the first round. I'm sure you weren't happy with that result. You guys are in D2 now. How do you feel about where you guys are at being in D2? Is that good? Do you feel like you guys fit, fit in there? How do you feel about that? Well, along with our schedule, I mean, we truly believe that we're willing to play anyone, anywhere at any time, um, do whatever the CIF uh, decided moving us to Division Two due to the size of our school. We're, we're fine with that. I mean, we just have to focus on who we play week in, week out, regardless of the division. All right, uh, Pepe Villasen, you're entering year two. Uh, like I mentioned, Visalia Central Valley Christian right here at J. Will Stadium, August 23rd. Uh, thank you for your time, Coach, and uh, good luck this season. Thank you, Joe. All right.